Let's have some fun with joinery today. A bridal joint is one of the strongest joints you can make. So today I wanna to try to join three pieces of wood using a bridal joint so that it looks something like this. Before I start, I just need to mill three pieces to be the exact same size. The dimensions of these pieces don't matter at all, they just all need to be identical. So referencing the smallest piece, I cut the other two to match by first ripping to width at the table saw and then resawing to thickness at the bandsaw. And then I finally brought them to their final matching dimensions at the planer and these pieces are ready for layout. I put some painter's tape on just so you guys can easily see what material I am removing, but here's a drawing showing pretty clearly what I'm after. There will be three different processes to make this joint. First, a 60 degree angle will be cut off one end. Then the inside mortise of the bridal joint will be cut away. Then two notches will be cut, leaving this piece in the middle here. And hopefully, if I mark all this correctly, the joint will look something like this. I start with the first process of marking the 60 degree angle on the end. This little square has a pin you can put in it to easily mark common angles, which is pretty cool. When you insert it, it holds the square at the desired angle against the edge of the piece. I'll remove the tape on all the parts that are going to be cut away so it's easier for you guys to see. The mortise needs to be the whole width of the piece that's going to go inside of it. So I use the actual workpiece as a reference for where to make the next mark. I hold my square up against it and mark with a pencil this time because this is actually going to be an inside cut. Remember, this is the mortise section. The line drawn here is a guide to bring the cut down to the edges of the workpiece. Now the next portion, the notches, will have the same angle as the first, but will be flipped the other way. And the cut will begin right where the mark for the mortise is. This time I use a marking knife instead of a pencil because this outer material will actually be cut away and removed. Then using the actual workpiece again as a guide, I placed it on the mark I just made, made sure the angle was correct by holding my square against it, and marked it out with a knife. Moving on to the sides, I set a wheel marking gauge so it would divide the workpiece into thirds and marked off the areas that need to be cut away using both faces as a reference. Now, knowing the width of those cuts, I could use the marking knife to cut in their stopping points and peeled away all the tape representing the areas where I need to remove material. I forgot about the underside, but you get the idea here. There's lots of tools you can use to cut this. I'm going to use the table saw with my miter gauge set to 60 degrees or 30, depending on how you look at it. Using a stop lock, I can make sure that when the angle is cut, all the pieces will be the same length. That was step one, easy enough. On to step two, which is cutting the mortise for the bridal joint on the end. I'll be removing the material up to the pencil line I made when marking out the piece. So with this piece on its end I just cut, I raise the blade up to that pencil line. You can use an awesome tenoning jig like this that's made for this purpose, but instead I'm going to use my shop made tenoning jig because it has more flexibility when it comes to adjusting the angles. I can adjust the fence back to match the angle, which the store brought one can also do. But what I can't do is adjust the fence forward so I can rotate my workpiece instead of adjusting the fence. This will give me more even results. To use it, I set the fence on the jig to the correct angle using the bottom of the cut as a reference, then adjust the fence on my saw so the blade is in line with the inside of one of my marks. The piece covered in tape is actually an extra tester piece that I milled up that I'm going to use to make sure that the fence and blade height is in the correct position before cutting into my actual work pieces. Once I know it's set up correctly, I could simply make that cut on all three of my actual work pieces. Like I said before, instead of adjusting the table saw fence to make the second cut, I adjusted the fence on the tenoning jig to match the angle when the piece is flipped over on the other face and then made that cut on all three of my parts. The store-bought tenoning jig, you would have to adjust the jig itself and not your actual table saw fence. So flipping the boards instead of adjusting the table saw fence or the store-bought jig makes that cut the same distance away from both faces of the boards without too much effort. Cool. 
And the last step of this operation is to adjust the fence so it cleans out the middle of those two cuts. Easy enough, moving on to step three. Cutting out the notches, leaving the middle that will fit into the mortise cut in the previous step. For this operation, I'll use my crosscut sled. And I can use the material left over from the mortise cut in the second operation to set the blade height for this notch. I could have used my miter gauge to do this step, but I prefer to use my sled that has an adjustable fence attachment on it. I set the fence using the cut end against the blade as a reference and use the tester piece to dial in where I should make the cut. I was aiming for the edge of this cut to be right in line with the edge of the mortise I made in the previous step. Once I nailed that location, I used a temporary stop lock on my sled with some double-sided tape that I can butt the rest of the pieces up against to make that same cut on all the parts. Then I did the same thing for the other end of the notch, fine-tuned the location so that the notch will be as wide as the work pieces, set the stop lock, then made that cut on all three parts. All that's left to do here is clean up all the material that remains between those two cuts by taking multiple passes with the saw. And while I'm doing this, just a quick word from this week's sponsor, Audible. As you must have realized from these videos, learning new techniques when it comes to woodworking is something that I love to do. But one of my other passions is music, and I try to soak in any information I can to help me understand music better so I can play guitar better. With Audible's newest plan, Audible Plus, you get full access to the Plus catalog that's filled with thousands of titles across different formats and genres. Audible isn't just for audiobooks. You can listen to exclusive podcasts and unique Audible originals. One of the series I've been loving lately is Words Plus Music, where artists from the music industry tell their story along with exclusive performances. The latest one that I listened to was How to Play the Guitar, and Why by Elvis Costello. I was never a huge Elvis Costello fan, but this title was really entertaining and gave some insightful points about the process of learning how to play guitar. If you're into music, I highly recommend it and the other titles in the Words Plus Music series, which you will get full access to with an Audible Plus membership. All you need to do is download the Audible app and you can try Audible Plus free for 30 days. Head on over to audible.com slash Tamar or text Tamar to 500, 500 and start listening today. That's audible.com slash T-A-M-A-R or text T-A-M-A-R, my name, to 500, 500. All right, now moving on to the other side of the workpiece to make the notch on the other side. To do this, I had to adjust the angled fence to match the angle when the piece is flipped over and just repeat the same process. Locate one end of the notch, make that cut on all the pieces, locate the other end of the notch, cut on all the pieces, and then remove all the material between those two cuts. Now, this doesn't fit right away because I anticipated needing to clean up the joint a bit. I used a blade that has alternate top beveled teeth. That's what leaves those lines. And I could have swapped out to a flat top blade for a cleaner cut, but my flat top grind blade is full kerf and would widen the kerf on my sled, so I just didn't want to do that. This is easy enough to clean up with double-sided tape, some scraps, and a pattern bit and a router. All you have to do is make sure the scrap you're using is flush against the edge of the cut that you made, and the bearing on the pattern bit will ride along that so it won't mess with the width of the notch at all. It will only change the depth and that's what you want. So you run the router on both sides and keep testing it until you have a perfect fit. That is just super satisfying. If routers aren't your thing though, you can also use a router plane that will accomplish the same results. But this method was quick and easy for me, so I stuck with it. Again, so satisfying when these pieces fit together so nicely like that. After doing the third one, it's finally time to test fit all these three pieces together. The hardest part about this is lining up all the pieces so that they'll all go in at the same time. And then all the pieces just slid together in perfect unison. Oh. 
That was so cool. I'm trying to take it apart so I could glue it, but this is not coming apart so easily. This is a crazy strong joint. <sighs> this joint is so fun. So I added glue inside all the notches and this time the pieces did not slide together in a satisfying manner. When they say leave some room for glue, they mean it. After panicking a bit with my mallet, I finally got all the pieces to seat nicely together. When it comes to clamps with a bridle joint, you only need to apply pressure on the faces of the material to close up any gaps that could open up on the end. Basically, it's like a sandwich and you wanna squeeze all three parts of the sandwich together. Just a little bit of cleanup work after the glue dries. I just sanded the faces so that everything was nice and even, and the end grain from one piece was sticking out a bit from the sides of the joint. Just a few quick passes with a block plane will flush that right up. I'll make sure to link to this low angle block plane. It's pretty awesome. Now let's see what this thing looks like with some finish on it. I love the look of these contrasting woods here. That was so fun to do. <laughs> um, I had no idea that it was gonna slide together like that at the end. That was just like really satisfying and uh, I wanna do more stuff like this. So there's a few flaws, a few mistakes here. So see there's like a, an opening on this side over here. It's cause I made this notch on this end just slightly too big. I don't know how that happened, but it happened. And hopefully it's just something that I won't do the next time. This was my first time ever doing this joint like this. So uh, I think it's pretty good <laughs> for my first time. Um, I'm just loving the contrast of the woods here. This is walnut, white oak, and I think this is poplar. And I just think it's really cool to see the layers, like the sandwiching of the the wood and the contra the triangle that it makes on top so normally you would use this kind of joint to join like a three-legged table or a three-legged stool or a three-legged chair or something like that but this whole shape with the contrasting woods it's kind of giving me an idea that i want to try so stay tuned uh this is definitely inspiring me to do some more projects like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and thank you to Woodcraft and Audible for sponsoring this video. I will see you on the next one.